Hi, it's Alex with Home Reno Secrets, and today we're going to do a property tour. We've just finished this renovation, and I'm super proud of it. It was one of the hardest ones yet. We've taken this house back to the studs and rebuilt it in our own way. A lot of walls have been taken out and a lot of rooms reconfigured. Along the tour, I've listed a lot of the products that we've used and colors that we've used. But if you see something that you'd like to know how we did it or where we got it, just send us an email and we'll be happy to get back to you with that. I hope this tour inspires you on what you can do and with the list of the materials and hopefully with more of our how-to videos, you'll be able to do it in this exact way for yourself. The homeowner of this house really loved open concept living spaces and when we got here, everything was separated and closed off. When you walked up the stairs, there was a wall here blocking off all the view behind me and there was a, a wall here separating this living room from a dining room and there was also another wall right here across the entire kitchen. So it was a really tiny, slim kitchen. So we decided to put beams uh, across the house, one here and one behind me and then that created a big open space and it allowed us to see basically from the front window through the house and all the way out to the beautiful backyard and golf course behind us. So we're actually at our island in the kitchen here. This one is four feet by nine feet long and it has actually four chairs down the long side and it has two bar stools that can tuck under at the end. So it has seating for six, which is great for family parties or just breakfast in the morning. The overhangs on this island are 11 inches, but you can go down from that or up from that by a few inches um, and still be able to have comfortable seating. This countertop is uh, by Caesar Stone and it's called Organic White. We like to have drawers on this side of the island and then on that side we have a shorter cabinet with doors and shelves. We also like to put a plug on each end, so that way if you got your phone or you're working there with a the computer, it's really easy to get power. And we usually like to tuck our microwave under into a cabinet on this side. One amazing kitchen upgrade was this instant hot water tap. So just like Starbucks, you turn the tap for a tea and it's instantly hot. And another is this double drawer dishwasher from Fisher Paycal. One of my favorite things about this kitchen is that we've taken the subway tile right up and around the window. I also love how we've taken the crown right from this pantry side here, right across the top, connecting the other side of the kitchen. These subway tiles are four inches by eight inches. They're a gloss finish and they do have some movement in it. So when you look at it from the side, it's got that nice sort of crinkly look to it. It's really nice to have this window. We've changed all the windows in this house. It's nice to have a window right above your sink so that way when you're standing at it and uh, spending a lot of time there, you can have a nice view and get lots of natural light. When we did it, we decided to put in these metal grills. They're one quarter inch and they're on the inside, which is awesome because it adds a lot of character. They're really beautiful, but it's also practical and really easy to clean. During the renovation process, right in front of me, we actually had a really big brick chimney that was going from the basement out the roof of the house and in that there was an air return so we got to thinking where could we move that because we wanted a big open concept space so we ended up putting it behind the pantry here so this cabinet is actually only 10 inches deep and then hiding behind that is our air return we haven't let any space go to waste and beside this pantry we've got our refrigerator and although it's not a, a totally built-in integrated Sub-Zero and Wolf refrigerator, we've got the Fisher and Paycal model and it's counter depth. So it allows you to have that kind of built-in look without spending the huge money for the completely integrated refrigerator. One signature piece that we have to add to every kitchen is the magnetic chalkboard. We have a supplier and the quality is amazing. I find it's a lot higher quality than the paint on ones and it's also magnetic. So it's really cool for hanging pictures or being able to write on your recipes or anything like that. Also, if you do have room, we love adding a day bed to the end of the kitchen. It's really awesome for kids to hang out on while mom's cooking dinner. I know dogs love them and it's also great for a Sunday afternoon nap. In 
now our living room here. We've got end-to-end -end bookcases and fireplace mantle. And I love how we've wrapped the fireplace around with soapstone. Can be oiled to be a really dark finish, but we've left it actually gray, so you can really see the veining and it's, it's matte, beautiful finish. One of the things I love about this built-in is how we've done the Samsung frame TV, which really looks like a piece of art hanging on your wall, and there's many, many pictures to choose from. We've also installed the Sonos Arc soundbar, and it's beautiful because it's white and it blends right in with the built-in cabinetry. The bookshelves are awesome because you can really display your personality. On these ones here, they have cookbooks, magazines, and little mementos to show their family and friends. Over here, right behind the frame on the bookshelves, we've installed rope lighting, which goes up the sides and then over the top. So at night it creates a really nice ambiance and it's actually dimmable, so it's not too bright if you're watching a movie. Now we're at the opposite end of the room and we wanted this side to look just as beautiful as the main focal point. One thing I've noticed a lot of people doing is hanging their pictures and their wall art too high. And a good rule of thumb we like to use is find an average height person and hang the center of the picture at their eye level or have it a little bit lower than their eye level and you'll usually end up with your picture at the right height. We're in the family room now and we've decided to bring down that soapstone feel from the main level to this room by doing this fireplace completely in soapstone. We've also left this one in its uh, natural state. You can put mineral oil on them and it really makes them like nice dark black, but this one we've left natural and it really ties in the outdoor features to the inside. This room walks out right onto a deck we've made and it's got an armor stone courtyard. So the grays from this and the armor stone outside really play well off each other. And it feels like in the summer, you're almost having an extension of this family room right outside where you can barbecue or hang out on the sofa out there. We decided to wrap this entire room in shiplap, which creates a really nice cozy feeling. We've then installed our casing and baseboards on top of the shiplap to make sure we have that full depth of the casing and the baseboard. It just creates more definition and allows us to see the full size of the trim. This was done at a time when I was still painting shiplap by hand, so I still remember the amount of work and how tedious it was to get the paint looking like it does. We also carried our shiplap underneath the bar and used it as a backsplash. And then we've wrapped our Caesar stone countertops and put that as a backsplash as well. That's three and a half inches and it just helps with any water splashing from the bar or when drinks are getting made. It's so nice to have a bar right near your backyard with a mini fridge equipped with all the drinks you'd ever want and also a sink so you can wash the dishes here and just put them right back on the shelf. All of the paint in this home is by Bedroom Moore. We've used Chantilly Lace for all of the walls and ceilings, uh, usually in the Alti matte finish. And on all the baseboard and trim, we usually do the same color Chantilly Lace, but we'll use a pearl finish. Then on ceilings, we do the same color, but we use an even flatter paint and it creates that really nice definition between your trim and your walls. One of the things we do in almost every project is a ton of built-ins. Definitely go way overboard with them but we put them in every spot where there's a closet, um, including linen cupboards, entryways, and especially bedrooms. They give a ton of storage, and the drawers at the bottom are amazing. So usually above we have hanging, and if it's high enough, we put a shelf or two, depending on how high your ceilings are. If you have a small space or a small bedroom, it's great to hang the lights on the wall. We find it saves from putting them on the night table and it saves a lot of room as well. These ones here are from Restoration Hardware 
and they're not actually hardwired. They're hung on the wall, but we do have a cord going down and plugged in below. That'll save you some money and the electrician won't have to go fishing wires along back behind on an exterior wall. When we came into this house, there was actually a wall right here going through. And then there were two bathrooms, a really small primary bathroom off the primary bedroom. And then one kind of larger guest bathroom. And we wanted to flip that. We wanted this primary bedroom to be a showstopper with an amazing view to the golf course, beautiful tub and a beautiful shower. And the only way we could do that is by taking out this wall and totally reconfiguring the bathrooms. We actually changed this wall, put a wall going this way to have a smaller, um, bathroom behind this wall. And then we put the shower over here and it's given us room for the rest of the fixtures to go this way and the view on the golf course. One of the best features of this bathroom is the bathtub. We've decided to undermount the tub. Uh, we framed it in below with waterproof panels. And then on top of that, we've got this beautiful white Corian surface that's just completely seamless. That's one of my favorite things about this material is that you don't see any joints of uh, where it came together. It just completely looks like one piece of material. We've also got all Rybel chrome fixtures in the home, so everything matches and goes with each other. Another feature that I love about this bathroom is how we've incorporated the large tiles on the floor that transition right into the shower that's also curbless. So it creates a really seamless finish when you carry the same tile in your bathroom right into the shower with no curb. It takes a little bit of extra work because you have to redo framing on the floor to make sure that everything lines up, but it's definitely worth it. We also carry the Corian from this bathtub into the shower by using it on the top of the seat and as well as wrapping the inside of the niche with it. The tiles in the shower are four inches or five inches by five inches. They have a lot of movement in them, even on the edge of the tile. So it takes a really skilled installer to make this shower look really good. Thanks so much for watching the video today. I hope you learned something and that it inspired you. I'm going to be sharing more about how to do this yourself so that you feel confident to jump on your own reno, reno and create a space like this for yourself.